All right, so after completing your Desmos activity on local linearity, that hopefully left you with something looking like this all set up, um, I wanna do a little summary of really what is the purpose of local linearity? What does it tell us? How do we use our graphs to investigate them, some things in calculus? So we talked as a class that this graph right here, while it might look like y equals x, we decided that it actually was just us zoomed in really close on y equals sine of x on a close interval near zero. And so what we found is that the slope of this graph at zero is one, okay? So that's only at zero though. We know that a sine curve, its slopes are going to change depending on where you are along the curve. So that's really what the whole first part of calculus is going to be about is that the slope or steepness at various points on a function is different. Unlike a line, which has a steady slope or consistent steepness, the slope of a curve is variable. Therefore, when we talk about the slope, there's going to be a variable in it. If we're not talking about a specific location and we're talking about the slope of a curve in general, we should see something that varies. So we're gonna estimate the steepness or slope of the curve at a variety of locations using the fact that we know how to find the slope of lines. So that's what you did when you built your Desmos activity, and you filled in all of the different slopes for what was going on at negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, et cetera. All right, so then we had you estimate what was f of 0 0.707. That was our featured point, if you will, f of 0 0.707. And we had you build a secant line. And what we found is that our secant line, this thing right here, right, was above the graph at 0 0.707. And then we asked you to estimate what would happen if you talked about the tangent line. Well, the tangent lines are below the graph. They're a little bit too low on this green function. If you look over here, right, we have a function that is decreasing. So this would have been the other side of the parabola, all right? But notice the tangent line is still underestimating secant line still overestimating. So it doesn't have to do with if our function is increasing or decreasing. It has to do with what we call the concavity or the curvature of the graph. So this is if f is concave up. Concave up is like a smiley face, okay? So anywhere along this curve, the tangent lines are gonna be too low. The secant lines, if you start connecting across, are going to be too high. If we look down at this next example then, we have this function that is increasing. But we have this piece that is decreasing. And notice that the tangent lines here are too high. They're above the curve. Whereas the secant lines are too low, they are below the curve. So this is what we call concave down. And I like to think about concave down as when it's a frown. So each of these tangent lines, if I were to draw them, are going to be above the curve, but if you start connecting secant lines, they all exist below the curve. And so why this is important is that if we are going to use a tangent line to estimate what's going on, which is a big concept in economics, we need to know if that's going to be an overestimate or an underestimate of what to expect. And you can think about how in the business world it would be really, really helpful to know if you are projecting too high or too low and what's going on with your business. So again, here's a nice little picture for you. This graph would be, we would say, concave up, right? Concave up, cup, it's smiling. We've got this going on, which means that the tangent line values are going to be slightly too low. The secant values are going to be slightly too high. So let's start first by writing the equation of this secant line. So our secant line slope, I'm going to call it m. So we would say... We'll use this as a, nope, we're going to use this point as b comma f of b. So if I wanted this secant line slope, I could write y minus f of b equals the slope and x minus b. But that line is going to be higher, right? This is going to be too high for f of x. So instead, I can then write the tangent line do that one in pink. We'll call this point a comma f of a. 
And so now when I do this line, I've got y minus f of a equals, I'm going to skip the slope for right now, x minus a. Because I only have a single point. I don't have two points like I did for finding this slope up here of m, right? I can find the slope between two points using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So instead, what I need to do is I would have done the difference quotient. And I would have said, okay, well, let's start with this secant line and let's close it in. And instead of looking on this whole interval, let's start looking maybe at this interval or this interval or this interval. And let's zoom in until eventually we get to just this point and figuring out that the slope of the tangent line at A is known as the derivative of the function evaluated at A. All right, so this is a big one that needs to go in your notes. Point slope form is y minus y2 equals m times x minus x2. This is a formula you've been working with for quite some time. From now on, with calculus, point slope form is going to help us write the equation of a tangent line. And so our point slope form is going to look like y minus f of a equals the slope at a at that exact moment. Because remember, the slope is not going to be constant. We're going to have a variable, right? So we're going to plug in a, because that's our point of curiosity, and then x minus a. So thinking about your Desmos activity, you were supposed to plug in when a was equal to 3. Okay, this part you don't have to write down. This is just a little throwback to Desmos. So when a is 3 and our f of x was x squared, we would say then y minus 9, because 3 squared is 9, equals you found f prime of a was 6 and then x minus 3. This would be the equation of the tangent line at x equals 3. Okay, so why can we use these tangent lines? Well, I mentioned using them as an estimate. So if I, lock, if I talk about this blue curve again, right, this is the curve part, this is f of x, and I have this point right here, and I wanted to know what was going on over here at, let's say, B. And I wanted to figure out what is F of B. Well, if I didn't know exactly on my function, but I had the equation of the tangent line, I could plug B into my tangent line. And now I get an estimate or a linear approximation, right? Because this is from the line that's close by, a linear approximation of what's actually going on on the curve. And looking at this then, because our graph is concave up, we would know that this red approximation is a little bit too low or underestimating what's going on on the function itself. All right, so this graph looks scary, but don't let it be scary. Uh, this again, we have our blue function, y equals f of x. I've got a secant line here drawn in black, and then I've got this tangent line that's pink. I'm going to use red for it when I write about it. So this tangent line, this is that L for local linearity. It's a linear approximation. If I zoomed in close enough here, the blue curve at C would have the same slope of this pink line at C. That's what we're working on. If you zoom in close enough, the blue and the pink are going to be exactly the same. So the secant line is what allows us to get there. We can take these two points and we can move them closer. So we could move X closer to C. That's one form of the derivative. Or we could call this h, and we could say we need h to go to 0, because we want to close in until we get to that tangent line. So really what's happening, if we think back to that point slope form line, is we would have y minus, this time f of c, right, because that's our point, equals f prime of c, x minus c. And now I could uh, isolate, sorry, I lost that word for a second. I can isolate this y is really this L of t. So I could say my local linear approximation is equal to f prime of c times x minus c plus f of c. I would just swing this around. And now I can use this to, again, do that approximating. What if I wanted to know what was going on right here at point b? Well, I could say that my local linear approximation is going to equal 
f prime of c, and I want to know what's going on at b minus c. And that was supposed to change colors. Plus f of c. And so now I have a local linear approximation. It would give me this red dot right here is going to be my value that I get at the end. Now looking at that, you'd be able to say that that again is a slight underestimate. Okay? We will not be using secant lines. We just used the secant line recently to see how it becomes the tangent line. But really, first semester calculus is all about the study of the tangent line. All right, we've got a story problem. You do not need to write out this whole story problem in your notes. Okay, it's a lot of words, a lot of numbers. Uh, but I want you to take a minute, pause the video, and I want you to read this whole prompt and statement to yourself. So go ahead and pause the video. Come back once you have everything read. All right, so we have a table of data up here. And we know that our function is twice differentiable. We'll get to what that means in a little while, but we're looking from zero to 10. G of t is measured in thousands of gallons, and it's known that G of t is concave down from five to 10, which means we've got something like this from five to 10. Use the data in the table to estimate the rate of change. When you see estimate rate of change, you are thinking estimating the slope of the amount of gasoline in the storage tank at time t equals three. Show the computations, indicate units of measure. Great, well I know how to find slope. It's change in y over change in x. So I need to just figure out what points I should be using. Well I want the slope at one point, which means really I'm estimating the tangent line slope or the derivative. If I look up here, I don't have time three, but I do have times one and five. So I could set up just a slope between 19.5 minus 18.5 over five minus one. And that's gonna end up giving me one over four. And if I think about units, y was measured in thousands of gallons and x was measured in hours. So this would be one fourth thousands of gallons per hour, which makes sense because we just wanted to create a rate. So we just used two endpoints, one and five, to estimate the rate of change at three. So we used a secant line to estimate the tangent line slope. Okay, it's known that g prime of five, which would be the derivative at five, is equal to 0.5. Use local linear approximation for g at time five to approximate what's going on at seven. Okay, so I'm supposed to use what's going on at five. Well, here's what's going on at five. I have the point five comma 19.5, and I also have my slope g prime of five. So the slope at five is 0.5. Well, great, I can put this together in the equation of a line, and I can say y equals, nope, that's not what I want. I can say y minus 19.5 equals my slope at five, right, at the exact instant, the instant slope, and then x minus five. And then I'm gonna use this to estimate what in the world is going on at seven. Well, y minus 19.5 equals one half, seven minus five. Half of two is one, add 19.5 over, so g of t, because that's our y, right, our output, is approximately 20.5 gallons. Mm, thousands of gallons. Got to be careful with my units. Uh, give a reason for your answer. So this right here would be justifying it. I want to show you a quick little picture. Okay, so I knew all the information at 5, and I knew how to write this locally linear thing. If I zoom in on that yellow point, all of this information is gonna be true. I wanted to know what was going on at seven, so I wanted this purple dot, but instead I plugged in seven to my green line and I found something that was close. In this case, it would be a slight overestimate because our graph was concave down, right? Tangent line overestimates when your function is concave down. So hopefully that was a good little summary. Um, there's plenty of other videos on the interwebs all about local linearity, but Go back and rewatch this one if you're looking for some hints. And go back and look through that Desmos packet. The answer key and the video for that should be up as well. 
Thanks for watching.